So good morning, Kate. How are you? Really good, thank you. It's uh, it's obviously just before lunchtime on Good Friday. So thank you for sparing your time with us on Good Friday to to have a quick chat about all things nutrition based. As a brilliant nutritional therapist, um, I wanted to catch up with you and discuss all things probably more immunotherapy based or immune system based than anything else um, but obviously we will touch a little bit more specifically on this current pandemic that has caged us all in our houses um, so take it away how are you and what have you been up to since all of this has been going on um well, I think my main job, I mean, clients wise, it's all been a little bit quieter. I think everybody's slightly in shock. Um, yeah. And um, there's been a huge amount of fear around. So it's for me, it's been trying to teach people um, uh, how to switch their fight flight off when that's kind of all that anxiety is raging. Right. Um and um through sort of breathing techniques visualizations those kind of things so not so much nutrition based but just yeah, clearly. Kind of <clears throat> talking to everybody and trying to sort of get them to calm down yes yeah um, it's, it's, it's an interesting start isn't it because straight into something completely outside of the nutritional qualification which i'm aware that you have other skills other tools in your toolbox um, what, what are those particularly? What are the other qualifications that you've mentioned there that you, you've been using? Well, I guess, I mean, I have got, you know, basic counselling skills, but <clears throat> I think on my journey as a nutritional therapist, um, one of the most prevalent things that I have to deal with is people with a disordered stress response, you know, because our 21st century environment has created a world where it's so fast and crazy that our bodies feel unsafe um, yes. and of course you know an unsafe body will be running the fight flight mechanism and of course when when you're running fight flight so many of the other systems in the body that are kind of regeneration and repair digestion detoxing <clears throat> all those kind of things and the immune system get yeah. put on the back burner because actually your body thinks that it's in a dangerous situation where it needs to be fighting the saber-toothed tiger so it's not important that all those kind of other mechanisms are working full pelt um, so all, all, all the other current systems that we would be hopefully relying on to be working at their very best whether it's because of COVID-19 or any other kind of virus that, that might be Absolutely. out there are potentially going to be, would you describe it as being depleted, as, as running running low or, or just not yeah, running at I all? I think you know, it's not a priority for the body because um, you know, if you've got a life-threatening situation going on, um, then it's not important that you fight that bacterial infection in your big toe, you know, mm. because there's something much more pressing. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the body has to um, send its resources where it feels it, it's, it's best. Um, mm. And obviously, you know, <clears throat> if you're in a, a supposedly life-threatening situation, that's what your body has to concentrate on that moment in time. And it's, it's so... By the sound of what you're describing there is our interpretation of what is a life threatening scenario so you know we're not describing this in relation to people that have contracted this particular virus at the moment i think no. what you're so what you're describing is these triggers um there's far more stress triggers out there at the moment for the mm. way that we're having to live whilst yeah. this viral kind of spread takes place that the accumulation of those stress triggers is as far as our body's concerned is the same as as you say fight or flight life threatening scenarios yeah absolutely yeah spot on so so what so so the advice you've been giving um as you say your clients who first and foremost have found you because of 
wanting perhaps to, to change their nutritional strategy, mm -hmm. um, as I've learned from you, rather than terming this diet. So their nutritional strategy. Uh, well, so they I, just, I suppose, I, you know, the diet thing, I hate the word diet because it implies <laughs> that it's something that's temporary. You know, right. yeah. ideally, you know, when I'm advising people how to eat well, this is the way I would like them to eat forever, you know, because I don't understand the kind of mentality of you eating really well, fixing your body and the game. Well, now I can just go back to how I was eating before because the body, you know, will return to its original state. Yeah. Um, yeah. So change direction rather than just dip into, hmm. dip into having a go at this for a period. So, okay. So in, in the context of what's going on, what would you suggest people, uh, if they're not already doing so, and, and obviously we're not asking you to list out loads of ingredients and loads of recipes that are going to make us impregnable to this virus in itself, um, but anything that you, you think are kind of quick wins for people to, to add in to their lifestyle and their nutritional strategy to help with something like this and their immune system? Okay. Um, I think when um we are well we've got sort of two two lots of people i feel in this in this virus situation we've got our wonderful carers and nhs workers who are you know running at full pelt yeah, um, and then we've got everybody else who's kind of stuck at home um potentially mm. bored and so I kind of, I'll focus on, I can do both, but I, I'll, I'll focus on the kind of majority of the population that's kind of stuck at home, a bit bored, possibly. Okay. Um, and, you know, what, because um, eating is such an emotional thing, when we feel bored, tired, upset, anxious, mm. um, it's often our default road to go, oh, I'm going to just comfort myself with some food. Yeah, um, feed the cravings. Absolutely. And so um, it's kind of really being aware of if you are heading to the kitchen, um, am I genuinely hungry or am I assuaging some other kind of need? Um, okay. And um, very often, if you can just stop for a minute, A, have a glass of water, that can sometimes help right um, yeah but be perhaps just sit down say right okay before i head to the kitchen i'm going to sit down and just breathe um properly for three minutes you know making right. sure that you're really getting air down into the diaphragm um mm. calming the body down and i think sometimes that can just be enough of a trigger to sort of go well actually no i really don't need that snack yes um, yeah but if you are genuinely hungry um, and you're still heading for the kitchen, um, I think it's really important that probably the one food that I would like people to try and to keep as low as possible is sugar. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is the nightmare thing, because obviously when you're <laughs> feeling anxious, it's the one thing that we all want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Happy, happy Easter. <laughs> yeah happy easter great um so um it's trying to sort of um i don't know keep your snacks more savory go for the toasted nuts you know the mm. vegetable sticks stuck in some hummus or guacamole or um all those kind of things rather than um just putting sugar in because sugar actually suppresses your immune system okay so, if we have a lot of sugar in our system, um, obviously it goes into the bloodstream. And um, if we have too much sugar, it tends to, those sugar molecules tend to st start sticking to things. So they right. stick to the blood vessel wall, um, but they, one of the things they do that affects our immune system is it sticks to our white blood cells. Right. So those are the little immune cells that, you know, go around the body, you know, on mm. their surveillance job dealing with um, viruses and pathogens. Mm. And um, if you've got your white blood cell and it's got a sugar molecule stuck on its back, it can't do its job properly. 
Right. Um, so that would be, you know, the kind of, you know, main reason why I'm not just being mean and difficult saying don't eat sugar. <laughs> there is a genuine reason why, um, yeah. particularly if we're trying to keep our immune systems as strong as possible. Okay. Sugar is not the best thing to be having. So, yeah. so try, try to avoid high sugar content or just sugar in general as best as you I can. I guess it, it kind of depends where you're coming from on this journey. Yeah. Um, you know, if you are used to having a lot of sugar, then anything you can do to cut down is going to mm. be helpful. Um, but I know how hard it is because sugar is incredibly drug like you know they prove yeah. that it is as addictive as cocaine so yeah. um it, you know it is a difficult one because often if you have a bit of sugar that's that's a trigger just for your body to kind of want more and before you know it that pack of hobnobs or you know chocolate funny has disappeared <laughs> yes um, yeah. so yeah it is a, it's a, it, you know the, the whole diet thing is so complicated it's not just easy for me to say well you know just cut down on the sugar it's mm. kind of being more cerebral about it and really thinking about what is that sugar feeding it's yes you know, you know it's not just feeding my hunger um yeah there may be hunger for other things uh, yeah um, true yeah in, in just reading the signals wrong right but but yeah. from habit more than anything and like you said earlier about the fight or flight mechanism with the fear and the anxiety particularly i think more so in people as you say that are cocooned at home and they've got mm. nothing more than information constantly bombarding them about how bad the situation is your cortisol is going to start being dumped into the body yeah. even more mm. and there are far better ways of managing that cortisol release than feeding it with sugar so yeah. you mentioned okay. there the deep breathing exercises you know perhaps even meditative practice for some people um or definitely taking advantage of the the one moment of exercise out of the house that that, that we're allowed to do at the moment mm. um, i think also on the on the exercise front yes fantastic to get outside and i think that's really really important every day but you know even just putting on a great song that you just love to dance to inside the house yes. um can be hugely helpful and it kind of lifts the mood lifts the vibration yeah. um yeah. so it might be that you're like every time you're heading to the kitchen for that sugary snack drink of water and write put my favorite song on dance around yeah. the sitting room um it just kind of makes that distraction and sends you off on a different route yeah yeah um, great idea yeah just and I, you know even even the very mechanism of uh, of singing itself you know shouting mm. it, you know get rid of the stress that way rather than feeding it with that craving um mm. whether it is sugar or perhaps it's worth letting people know certain foods that are you know high sugar content anyway obviously mm. alcohol certain types of alcohol um sure. there's been you know there's been reports of uh significant sales of alcohol since this period of time um which i get i can totally understand how people are going to feel if they're bedding in and they're staying home and you know mm. they need to to fuel that situation with with a regular drink but something nice you know and yeah to cheer us all up exactly yeah, it's a difficult one and i i mean i'm definitely not an advocate of teetotalism i think um there is huge value in that being able to sit down at the end of the day with a nice glass of wine or you know whatever it is whatever your tipple is but it's yes. one glass you know rather than that temptation to sort of oh well we'll just keep going with the bottle yeah um, yeah absolutely. and ideally not every night you know have your nights where you know that that's you know the night that you can have a drink yeah, um yeah and you let, let your let your body repair right that that's just as important absolutely. yeah so, so sugar's having a huge impact on our our immune system and how capable it is of of fighting off viruses what else would you recommend is there are other things whether it is ingredients or strategies that people could consider doing at this moment 
what to help your immune system yeah yeah i think um it's it's in our current environment <clears throat> sorry where um you know our shopping is probably maybe not as easy as as it could be and mm. you know, we can't always get all the things that we want yeah um uh, and in my world, um, ten people tend to get sort of very carried away with superfoods and all that kind of stuff. And mm. actually, for me, it's all about going back to basics. So okay. buying those raw ingredients, making sure that you're getting lots of veg um, and lots of brightly coloured vegetables, because they're the ones that um, contain the antioxidants, <clears throat> okay. which helps to support your immune system. Yeah. Um, I think vegetables, you know, the, you've got the antioxidants, you've got the fibre. The fibre will help your gut bacteria. And of okay. course, the gut is hugely linked to the immune system. Um, yeah. Most of our, well, they, you know, um, the word on the street in our world is that, you know, 80% of your immune system is based in the gut. 80%, I mean, right. If you think right. of, effectively, the gut as this massive surface area, I think they mm. talk about, you know, if you spread it out, it covers a tennis court or a football pitch or wow. something like that. Yeah. But it's a huge area. Um, and that area is effectively being exposed to the outside world because we are ingesting food from the outside with all its pesticides herbicides you know whatever the food manufacturers want to put in our food and yes. that is ending up in the interior of our body so it stands to reason that our immune system most of it that's where yes. it really needs to be um, okay. and much of it sits just below the surface of the gut wall so if anything manages to leak through the gut wall Mm. the immune system is there absolutely ready to blitz it so um, if we're if we're looking at this simply uh, for my benefit first and foremost if we're feeding our body with food that is perhaps in chemical origin as you say high sugar content or you know it's been processed and that's getting into the gut that will trigger an immune response anyway because it's it's creating an inflammatory reaction is that is that right yeah i think um you know there's there's so many um things that are added to our food that our body uh doesn't recognize um because it's, mm. a, it's a sort of alien thing that possibly has been created in a laboratory or yeah you know for instance you know a, a toxic type of sugar you know the sweeteners that are being used that is not something that the body can recognize as a natural product so anything that comes into the body that is not seen as something natural will trigger the immune system the immune okay. system has to come in and investigate it and decide what we're going to do with this thing you yeah. know we have to right well it's toxic so we need to send it off to the liver to get detox mm. um mm. So the more we can be kind of um, going back to basics, eating food that's, you know, been grown outside or, you know, lived in a field or, you mm. know, just it's, it's uh, yeah, my rule of thumb is the less messed about with your food has been the better. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Um, so there's less for your body to do with it. It can just yeah. get on with digesting it rather than having to go, oh, is that good? Is that bad? Um, you know, what are we going to do with it? And, and leave leave the immune system to to worry about the potential of contracting something like a virus yeah so yeah, that it's exactly. got its strength to, to work on that yeah so if we're going to limit creating that kind of reaction in the gut eating more whole foods as you say ones that are, i mean the ideal yes you could grow your own and, and bring it out of the ground that's on your doorstep if that's possible sure you know, people could still have little grow boxes if they live in apartments and things like that. But um, and, and you've probably seen that uh, there's been, a, again, a spike in the people uh, in the purchasing of grow beds, things like this. You know, people are going out there and planting seeds, which is brilliant. Brilliant. But they're going to have they're going to have a bit of a wait, though. Right. Sure. So so in yeah. the short term and in light of how accessing sourcing food is quite difficult you know is there any other kind of tips that you know of that, that could help people out in this situation i mean I, i'm aware of 
some local produce delivery services is it things like that that you would absolutely promote? you know if you can get to your local farm shop um you know all of those kind of i mean you know the supermarkets um are doing the most phenomenal job trying to serve yeah, yeah. this yeah. fluctuation in demand um, and my hope is as we could have carry on that everybody's going to start to relax a bit um, mm. and so therefore you know it's going to be much easier um, to get these products so um, if, you, if you were going to the supermarket and getting these particular products are there certain ones we should be looking for are you are you referencing more seasonal based whole foods at the moment absolutely again um, you know if you're eating seasonally um, then you're much more likely to be able to, to eat local. Um, mm -hmm. And so therefore that, that fruit and veg is going to be that much fresher. Yeah. Um, so, and I mean, at this time of year, um, I mean, I'm thinking, thank God we weren't, we're not going into Corona in November. Um, yes. You know, yeah. spring is sprung. We've got all this amazing stuff coming into coming through now. Mm -hmm. And even, um, you know, it, for anybody who can get out into the woods, you know, we've got, you know, garlic leaves, um, there's cow parsley, dandelion leaves will be coming through next month. All wow. of those things are fabulous um, for helping gut flora and supporting the immune system. Wow, is that right? Um, so, so a bit of foraging. A bit of foraging absolutely yeah, yeah. be careful um, what you pick though right <laughs> i mean well you yeah i mean i would definitely recommend um you know checking out <laughs> online what things look like i mean the garlic you can hardly miss it because it smells i mean it you know, smells okay. fabulous um dandelion most people are going to recognize a dandelion um and the leaves are they're very bitter but they are fabulous chopped up in a salad um, i was going to say so so how would you recommend people taking advantage of of literally what's on their doorstep in their local forest or on the side of, of, of the road even where would they where would they put these these ingredients how would they use them okay i will just say ideally don't pick stuff off the roadside okay. um, because <laughs> yeah, you've, course, got, yeah. you've got cars rushing past they'll all have been a bit polluted but yeah, if you can get off the road, so yeah. my top ones um, would be garlic leaves. Um, they are, I mean, you can chop them up and you can kind of throw them into anything that okay. is a bit garlicky. But I do make um, garlic pesto, which is quite potent. Okay. Um, but it's great when you're self-isolating because the whole family can, you know, gorge on garlic and um, you don't have to go out and breathe garlic fumes on everybody else. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yes, I mean, I would just whiz up the, the leaves with lots of olive oil. Um, and, I mean, obviously, the usual um, type of nut is pine nuts, but you don't yeah. have to use pine nuts. You can kind of use walnuts or okay or you know anything really that you like and the blend uh, up to make the pesto yeah exactly yeah. and then you know whiz that up with the garlic leaves and the um, olive oil and and then put in a bit of parmesan if mm. you can't do dairy um i tend to put in a little bit of tamari which is gluten-free soy sauce and some mm -hmm. nutritional yeast which again mm -hmm. is quite easy to get hold of okay um, good so you know but garlic leaves i mean you can kind of fling them in any, anything um, yeah and then as you say with the dandelion you, you're cutting the so using that within a salad so just literally yeah i mean you know when you eat salads and sometimes you know the the radicchio or you know it's quite bitter mm. um uh, it's it's kind of similar to that but anything that's really bitter will stimulate the liver um, okay. And so the liver produces more bile, which helps with the sort of detox flow. Mm. Um, so, you know, that's, yeah, dandelion leaves. But again, you know, you can, um, you could just chop them up and put them in a stir fry or, you know, you're not, you don't need to put a huge amount in. Right. Um, it's all about getting variety because the more diverse our diet is, the better mm. we are going to feed our gut bacteria. You know, for somebody and, and, who has a really, really healthy gut bacteria, you want a huge diversity of bugs in there. And if so you're you, eating, sorry. No, sorry, carry on. Yeah, so if you're eating a really diverse diet, you're feeding lots of different 
types of bacteria, which can only be a good thing. So you, you're wanting to give it something to do. You, you're, you're wanting to keep it busy with, you know, as you say, feeding the good bacteria, generating some, some interest down there so that it, it multiplies. Yeah, I think um, the, the foods that are going to really um, help the good bacteria to grow, they are called prebiotic foods. Right. Um, so right. they're things like, you know, onions, leeks, garlic, um, artichoke, uh, sweet potato, chicory, all of those things mm. are going to promote the growth of the good bacteria. The bad bacteria loves to eat um, things like sugar, mm. lots of refined carbohydrate. Um, and so the more we can kind of steer away from those types of foods, okay. um, diverse vegetable matter in there, you're going to really help your gut bacteria. Right. So let's talk about the stockpiling situation then where people went out in their drones and, and bought as much pasta that they could, as much bread as they could get their hands on. So I'm guessing therefore that these aren't the sort of things you really want to be consuming on a regular basis. Well, ideally not, but mm. you know, pasta will last forever. So you can just, you know, drip feed your intake of pasta yeah. um, going forward. It's, it's a difficult one because, um, ideally to keep ourselves really well you want to be eating fresh foods mm. um and uh and those things obviously you can't stockpile so well but yeah. even if you go out you know once a week do your shop get all the veg in um bit of fruit um get your good quality protein you know it should last for a week um mm. and then you don't have to be resorting to lots of pasta um, what, what kind of what kind of protein would you typically recommend? You sort of again locally sourced, uh, well bred meat that, that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, I mean meat wise, um, I think we've all been a bit misled about red meat being bad for us. Mm. Um, mm. And I'm not saying I mean I'm not a massive meat eater, and I but I do eat a bit of of, of meat, mm. um, and so meat wise if you've got you know your cows or your sheep that have been living outside you know ideally grass fed because grass fed as opposed to grain fed animals have a very different structure of fat in them right. um, and the type of fat um, in a grass fed animal is going to be much higher in omega-3s those are the essential healthy fats okay um so um, yes, your sort of local grown um, meat is fantastic. Eggs are absolutely amazing. Mm, um, love I an egg. Love know, an egg. Put eggs in wherever. Yeah. Um, and uh, nuts and seeds also, I mean, and great for snacks. Um, beans and lentils. Um, yes, I find a lot of people struggle to digest those properly they are um, you know beans are a tricky one in that you need to be really careful about how you cook them right um, because they can be high in something called lectins which can uh i don't want to get too complicated but they can kind of pre uh, promote an immune reaction in the body oh, okay. okay so you know if you are cooking beans ideally you want to get them dried and you want to cook them yourself. If they're tinned, you're never quite sure how they've been cooked and you need to really right. boil them vigorously um, for a good half an hour and then you kind of simmer away for a okay. few hours so you can boil all those things off. So, so getting them raw as opposed to, as you say, cooked and canned perhaps or packages. Yeah. Um, I mean, it might be fine. It's just, you know, you, you don't know with a can, you know, whether they've just yeah. put a quick blast in a pan and then shoved it in a can. Who knows? And, and, and the reality is as well, I mean, you know, given the situation, you're, you're offering this advice and, and potentially introducing people to a great idea to occupy time, right? If you've got to cook some beans off for an hour, if you've got to incorporate on your walk that you break off route and you go into the forest and you forage and you see what you can find to 
create a dish when you get back. Mm. Um, you know, for most of us at the moment, albeit you and I were saying earlier that that's not necessarily the case. Most of us have a bit more time on our hands and it might be something you get the, the kids involved with, you know, to, to give them something to focus on as well. So I think if you can, if you can source it, if you can get some of these ingredients, as you mentioned, and really kind of think about how to incorporate them into your diet to help your immune system, mm -hmm. it's only a good thing. Oh, absolutely. And I do, I, again, you know, this whole, <clears throat> because we are all so busy with our 21st century lives, the mm. cooking thing has been kind of shelved. And yeah. actually, I do look at this um, whole situation as a, a, a wonderful opportunity to get people back in the kitchens and engage mm. with food. Um, Absolutely. And, and spending time and enjoying eating it rather yeah. than you know grabbing something off the shelf that's kind of ready made and you know shoving it in the microwave and shoving it in because they're rushing off to the next meeting or whatever it is yeah. um and getting children involved with you know the cooking as well you know, getting yeah, really important. food um you know creating you know vegetable animals with your food because you've got time you know to be yeah. creative yeah. um so yeah no i think it's um it's it's a wonderful opportunity for us to sort of get into our kitchens and muck about we, with food. And if we're gonna if we're gonna commit a bit more time to doing that, is there is there other things that you would recommend, perhaps more from a lifestyle perspective as opposed to food, um, that would also then tally up with eating perhaps cleaner, better, and ultimately to help with the immune system. Anything else in terms of maybe the timing of when we eat, um, the kind of foods that we eat at certain times of the day. Is there any advice on, on that structure? Yeah, I think, um, again, it's all about slowing down. Right. Um, and uh, we, we, in our bodies, when we eat, we have something called the cephalic response, which is our okay. body's response to food, um, where it has to produce stomach acid and digestive enzymes. Um, and very often in our kind of speedy 21st century lives, you know, we shove something in and we don't really give our body warning that we're about to eat. Right. So it's not fully prepared down there. Um, and so, yeah, kind of just sitting. Um, I mean, obviously, if you spent time preparing the food, that will be getting your cephalic response going. You know, you want to be like, oh, yum, you know, good smells. Um, let's get that, yeah, okay. you know, the digestive yeah. juices flowing. Yeah. Um, uh, but if you, you know, and just maybe sitting, when you sit down with this wonderful plate of food that you've just cooked and, and look at it for 30 seconds, you know, feast on it with your eyes, smell, smell it. Um, and that, you know, is another way of just encouraging your body to get all those mechanisms yeah. you know, working as well as they should be fire up your senses right absolutely yeah yeah definitely um it's and, and then in terms of timing through the day is there anything specific for that, that would again would optimize the immune system i think um making sure that we don't have blood sugar spikes is obviously right going to help um, so in order to sort of prevent your body, I mean, you know, obviously, hopefully everybody's eating a little bit less sugar, um, mm -hmm. but making sure that you're having protein with every meal, um, slows down the sugar release from whatever you're eating because protein's a bit harder to break down. Mm -hmm. So it slows down the digestive process, which means then that the sugar release from the food that you've just eaten is a bit slower. Okay. Um, so you're less likely to get a spike um <laughs> with all those sugar molecules sticking to the immune cells in your bloodstream mm. um so yeah and, and obviously you know not so much from a an immune point of view but generally for well-being you know i wouldn't recommend you have pasta at the end of the day you'd be much better off if you are going to have pasta to have it at lunchtime okay um, so your Good body tip, has time yeah. to kind of burn it off um, yeah. it's not sitting like a stone in your system overnight so the, the 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 sort of timing of that particular carbohydrate obviously but then um 
food in general. I mean, I, I, I've read in places that they suggest try not to, to consume anything two hours before going to bed, you know, to try and get your system to start to, to sure. drop down, you know, in terms of digestion. Yeah. Is that, Absolutely. is that Absolutely. good advice? I mean, mm. two, two hours, I would say minimum. Right. Um, you know, if you can make it longer, all the better. Um, mm. I mean, you know, we, you, you could get into the kind of realms of intermittent fasting where you are eating all of your food within an eight hour window okay 24 hours which you know is is a great way to eat but for a lot of clients that i have because they have very, a very disordered blood sugar which are kind of swinging up and down mm. to expect them to get up in the morning and not put any fuel in the tank for a few hours is quite hard work on the adrenals because the adrenals yeah. are really having to sort out this low blood sugar issue um, so to get get some more balance in first it's better to kind of feel absolutely little yeah. bits and i think you know eating protein at every meal that helps to sort of balance yeah okay that, balance that out but yeah i think you know um definitely trying to give at least two or three hours before you go to bed right um, so therefore you know when we are asleep our bodies are doing a myriad of amazing jobs yeah yeah um, which they, they need to do when and can only do when we're asleep they don't want to have to be digesting as well you know Re the liver does a repair lot repair at the right time yeah repair mm -hmm. at the right time so that we're not getting run down and becoming more vulnerable to any any kind of virus um exactly. and, and just just on this as well i just wanted to you know clear it in my head and perhaps help others that might see this that we're not just talking about feeding as in eating food two hours at least before bed we're you're referencing any kind of calorific type drink as well so oh, does that definitely. include that yeah yes yes i mean yeah um teas ideally herbal later mm -hmm. on in the day um yeah. I mean, yes, any, any drinks that have got any kind of sugar in um, yeah. basically are not going to help. Um, cause they're alcohol, gonna... say it, Kate, alcohol. alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, I'm just not, I'm not a massive drinker, so I'm not on the alcohol road, but you're right. But I kind of feel, you know, if you're having one glass, yeah. but yes, don't have it just before you go to bed. Um, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, if you are, um, you know, drinking spirits like, you know, gin or vodka, watch the uh, mixer that you're putting it with. Okay. Because um, yes. again, that's a huge source of sugar. Um, um, tonic water in particular, even, right? Even tonic, yeah, mm. is really quite sugary. Um, so, I mean, my tipple is um, vodka with um, a sparkling water and lots of fresh lime juice. So it's okay. kind of keeping the sugar levels down as much as possible yeah um that seems to float my boat yeah um, good good but if you're used to eat drinking you know vodka and tonic which is quite sweet and sugary you yeah. might want to maybe you know just ease yourself in maybe do half soda half tonic um and you know generally i mean that's generally when i'm you know asking people to change habits it's you know do half and half and just kind of gradually inch over especially if you're dealing with kids you know you yes. can't suddenly expect them to be eating wheat you know drinking wheatgrass juice but <laughs> if you kind of slowly 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 you know maybe make yeah. a nice smoothie in the morning and put you know quarter of a teaspoon of wheatgrass powder in they're not mm. really going to notice but you're still going to be getting the good stuff in so it's sort of, you know, kind of slowly slowly catch the monkey yeah yeah and help them help them improve their immune system as well absolutely yeah, yeah definitely brilliant it's great great advice you know so you start off with advising on things completely outside of the food world and you know consider doing other other release techniques to um to fight off that trigger the stress response mm. that we're all in at the moment so some breathing exercises, exercises maybe involved in singing and dancing around the house, Brilliant, you know, yeah. and then head out on that time that we get for exercise and consider even foraging if it's available on your doorstep. Yeah. But then if you can't get access to that, 
source whatever you can from the shop but make sure it's vibrant in color so it looks fresh and it's ideal seasonal if we can good protein same with your meats make sure that you know that is if possible locally sourced and grass fed and yeah. add protein to every meal try not to eat anything past you know two hours before bed if not a bit bit before then sure. and whether it's at the top of the list, if you're going to drink your alcohol, make sure your mix is not too sugary and consider, a was it vodka, soda and lime? Yeah, lots of fresh lime. Fresh um, lime, fresh but, lime. And, and, and one glass, ideally. <laughs> yeah, one um, glass, just yes. one. And not every night. I know, very boring. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, what I will say is that, you know, this is all in a perfect world you know this kind of advice and you know if you go to the shops and you can't find um you know all these kind of wonderful fresh vegetables don't stress don't be anxious about it you know mm. panic and just do the best you can you know all these little things are going to help um you yeah. don't have to you know do everything perfectly yeah uh, well said absolutely um and so what's what's happening for you now future wise we don't know how long we're going to be stuck in this situation. So I know you are a very, very busy bee. You've always got something on the burner as such. So what are you up to? Well, I'm um, uh, so nice of you to ask. But I have got a book coming out um, on oh. the 12th of May. Right, there we go. Um, 12th of May. Uh, sorry? 12th, 12th of May. May. Yeah. Okay. And what um, was it called? An interesting time to be releasing a book. Yeah. Um, and uh, we, I'm just kind of negotiating with how best it's going to be to to, to distribute. Okay. Obviously, Amazon is my kind of you know going to be hopefully my prime place, but because books for them quite understandably are not taking a priority, <clears throat> yes. I think I yep. might be putting it putting it as an ebook on Amazon. But if people want a hard copy, they can order it from my website. Okay, so we'll put the details of your website on after the video as well, It'll be in the description. Thank What's thank the title you. of the book? Uh, the title is, I wish my doctor had told me this. There is more to our healing than medication. Oh, wow. Um, so wow. It's, it's about effectively the, the 21st century environment that we have created and mm. all of the elements in there that are pushing our body out of balance. Um, mm. And so therefore, because um, so much of chronic disease is coming from an environmental source, it's difficult for medication to solve the problem. It might suppress the symptoms, but it's not actually solving the underlying problem. Yes. Yeah. Um, brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Um, hopefully it will be popular. And go, go to the pharmacist on your doorstep outside yeah pick, pick what's sourced locally rather than pharmaceutically chemically derived in the lab makes sense well fingers crossed um yeah. yeah right well i look forward to having a look at that book i'll put the link as i say at the end of this as well so other people can find that um and i know also that you're you're busy preparing some recipes as well you're going to be taking some pictures and posting some recipes online so well, I'll, hopefully I'll, I'll put them on my website. It's just, it's about sort of, I mean, you know, thinking of kind of snacks and things that people can eat that are not going to hugely spike your blood sugar levels. Yeah, and cause mm. more problems. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, I am going to go and sing to my favourite song in the kitchen out loud because my kids are still on their daily exercise outside. If you keep the screen on while you're doing that, we, we'd all like to watch. I don't think anyone else needs to see that. No, it's a terrible, terrible sight <laughs> and terrible at singing as well, but it's good stress <laughs> relief. <laughs> Thanks again, Kate. Cheers for your time. I'll be back in touch. Talk to you about some other things in future. Brilliant. Lovely. Take Thanks a lot for having family. me. Okay. All right, no Bye. See you later. Bye.